Kia ora. this is a literary critique vlog for Creative Writing 501. My name is Tomairangi and the book I'll be analysing is Cousins by Patricia Grace. Cousins centres around three cousins, Mata, Makarita and Nasi, thrown together for a summer as children. However, life and circumstance pull their paths in different directions for years at a time, but their connection to each other can't be broken. Two techniques Patricia Grace uses to aid her story are place and space and the narrator's point of view. Place and space allow the reader to locate themselves within the story and infers the mood and tone. For example, the impression given from Mutter's first arrival to her auntie's house. The two kids had gone behind the house pulling the dirty baby, but it wasn't a real house. It was like being in the fort that the schoolboys had made once, out of boxes and boards. There was a stove with a pot and a kerosene tin on it, a basin and a row of tins on a bench, and boxes nailed to the walls like cupboards without doors. The walls were papered with old freelance and Auckland Weekly pages. This takes the reader to an interior dwelling. The comparison between the house and a schoolboy's fort infers an almost pitiful tone, as the text says it wasn't a real house. This, follows, this is followed by the names of the journal pages used in place of wallpaper. It sets an uncomfortable, maybe even disgusted mood when reading along with the description of the dirty baby not the kind of place a young girl wants to be on a summer holiday. With Makareta's story, the description of place and space changes tone completely. I made my way downstream, undressed and sat in the water. Rere and I had come to that place often. I remembered that our baby, soon to be born, could have been made there under the big manuka tree. She arced like a little swimmer, her little arms stroking. That's how our Makareta was born to me and to her family, without pain in wartime. Childbirth is a naturally intimate moment and can be a horrific experience in some cases, but the tone surrounding Makareta's birthplace feels spiritual, as the narrator reveals this place is close to where Makareta was conceived. There is a mood of nostalgia and a great significance attached to Makareta's birthplace. The significance aligns with how Māori view the connection between land and people, very different from the earlier place and space description in Mata's story. Missy's introduction to the story is different again, as the narrating point of view changes, so does the description of place and space. On the night we were born, our mother woke with a hard pain in her back. She'd had pain for most of the day, but because you dropped yourself down, she felt light and energetic. We heard her singing, didn't we, as she scolded the milk, made bread, scrubbed the floor. The narrator describes activities taking place on the day Missy is born, which infers a tone of diligence surrounding her. There's a mood of curiosity about her birth, prompting the reader to, to think about how the feelings and activities of the day will impact Missy's character. In each of the cousin's stories, there are very different tones and moods conveyed by the descriptions of place and space. This, along with narrator's point of view, connects the reader with all three girls and their stories in different ways. Mata, Makareta and Missy each have two parts to their stories. All three characters each narrate their story endings in first person. However, their beginnings are narrated from others point of, other points of view. Makareta's beginning is narrated by her mother, Polly. This is an interesting choice of narrator point of view, as Polly speaks in first person, narrating like she's discussing her daughter with a close friend. At other times, I know she will be at different gatherings, whether it is for a death, a land discussion, or a court hearing to do with land. The narration changes from the intimacy Polly felt at Makareta's birth to a melancholy separation as Makareta grows, preparing to be the saving grace of her whānau. By having Polly narrate from her point of view, the author can successfully convey Makareta's growth happening faster than Polly wants, and perhaps this will resonate with the reader too. Missy's beginning is narrated by her stillborn twin brother. He narrates in first person like Polly, but speaks directly to Missy, as though telling her story to her. Missy has grown up knowing her role is to help wherever she can. She did so from the womb when she dropped down so her mother could feel light and energetic. So when her family need it most, the reader could predict she would step, step up. You stood. The eyes shifted to you and words that at the moment of standing had been only a thought were coming from you, shocking and loud. I want it to be me. I want to be the one. Due to his intimacy with Missy as her womb buddy, the author is able to reflect how the brother reveres Missy for growing into a strong and decisive character. Mata's beginning is narrated in third person limited, accessing only Mata's thoughts and emotions. She'd been taken to live in a children's home, where she was always bad and strange. She'd had dirty skin and the kids had called her dirty. Her bad hair had been chopped with large scissors. 
She had never wanted to be bad, so she had scrubbed her skin, watered her hair down, and prayed to be good. Then one day, she put on her coat and her shoes and gone out following her feet, wanting nothing and going nowhere. Mata grew up in an environment that condemned rather than nurtured, her survival hindering on her willingness to conform, until she retreated into herself to keep from feeling that she wasn't enough. The third-person narration impacts differently from Makareta and Missy's narrations. While the author wants the reader to understand Makareta and Missy, Mata seems to be the character who needs a deeper connection with the reader. In reflection of how I connected with this book, the suppression of Māori identity resonated with me. Until the last few years, while I'm not ashamed to be Māori, I had felt a lack of connection to my culture and therefore part of myself. This largely impacted pieces in my writing folio, specifically the poetry pieces. At least three of the poems include something about my name, my language or my Māori identity. Coming home's central theme is my Māori identity. Grief includes an entire stanza written in Māori. The Tomarangi Morgan poem includes a stanza about my name. Reading Cousins, written by a Māori author and more importantly a wahine Māori, is my wairua about incorporating my Māori identity in my writing pieces. It also helped to shape the way I understand the stories I want to write.